Alpha Centauri, Historical Lies Murray's and Irma's Perspective Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more. I hope you are all doing very well. I am Marie Swaru. This video can be taken as science fiction or as the viewer sees best, but I take this information very seriously. Whoever has eyes to see. In the first part of this video, I will be sharing with you the official story of the people of Alpha Centauri. It is the history of the Alphratans the Galactic Federation gives everyone in space. It is what you find on the subject when you research Federation archives and what everyone accepts as the truth, and just about no one doubts it. In the shorter second part of this video, I will be discussing with you the things that I noticed, many inconsistencies and holes in the official narrative that make me strongly think that it is all fabricated. As well as how I connect all this to what is happening on Earth right now. I think I've gone full conspiracy theorist this time, and in no less than two levels, the one on Earth and the one in space. The official narrative of the history of the Alfrata people is as follows. They inhabit the second planet of the star Alpha Centauri A in the Alpha Centauri triple star system, which consists of Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Alpha Centauri C, also known as Proxima Centauri. And they are at a distance of approximately 4.36 light years from Earth, making them the closest star system and Earth as next door galactic neighbors, with Proxima Centauri at the closest point of the three at only 4.26 light years away. This inhabited second planet orbiting the Sun Alpha Centauri A is an M class superinhabitable planet classified as a better living place and with climate, gravity, and biology more favorable than the one on Earth for people of Lyrian origin, including humans. The climate is less extreme than on Earth, with fewer weather variations, more stability, with better oxygen content, and more sweet water than Earth. And with a 0.9 gravity strength, it is 10% easier to live in, simply because you weigh less there. Biology there is as diverse as the one found on Earth, but with much less hostile animals and plants, making it, generally speaking, a safer place to live in. This planet was initially called Phaeton by its reptilian overlords, as the official story goes, and only recently its name was changed to Planet Alfrata, from where its inhabitants take their name. 200,000 years ago, although there are some other Federation sources who claim all this happened 2 million years ago, all the people known as Lyrians, who are basically simply another name for humans or space humans, lived on the planet Lyra which is the second planet orbiting the star Vega some 25 light years away in the Lyra constellation, also considered as one of the closest stars to Earth. As the Federation archives go, planet Lyra is the place of origin of the human race and of all the others who have the same body of all the so-called Lyrian family. Interestingly enough, the Cabal on Earth seems to know this as well, as they also placed the origin of the human race in the star Vega in one of their most important movies on this subject, the film Contact from 1997, starred by Jodie Foster and Tom Skerritt. But I digress. The Lyrian people lived there peacefully, coexisting with their friendly neighbors, the large feline race Irma, who inhabited and still inhabits the first planet of the same star Vega called Avian. And back then, the Lyrians had limited interstellar capacity, limiting their movement to only local star systems and planets, mostly for trade. There is another Federation source that contradicts this, claiming that back then, the Lyrian people only had interplanetary travel capacity, limiting their range of movement only to the vicinity of the star Vega itself. All was well with them, and life was good until they faced a ferocious attack and takeover from a conglomerate of forces, mostly coming from the races of the star systems in Orion. Those races included several grey variants, all working for reptilian overlords, mostly from the Draco family. The Lyrian people did not have anything like a real or complete military, as they did not need it, living peacefully and mostly isolated on their planet. So, they were easy prey for the Orion invaders who were well organized and heavily armed. Most Lyrians were murdered there or taken as prisoners. Nevertheless, several Lyrian starships filled with people, men, women, and children managed to escape their Orion aggressors, managing to flee to several places all over the galaxy, and with their enemies in hot pursuit. This event is called the Great Expansion, 
and it is said to be when the Lyrian race was forced to spread out and establish colonies on countless planets in this galactic quadrant. This event also marks the start of the famous Orion Wars. This explains why the Lyrian, or space human, race is so prolific, as it is found all over the Milky Way galaxy nowadays. And, as the official story goes, the need for a working alliance not only among people belonging to the Lyrian race but also of other non-human races who also were in danger of being invaded by the same Orion aggressors, they all felt the need to organize a resistance movement to be able to face their common enemies more effectively. And this resistance movement is today called the United Federation of Planets, or simply known as the Galactic Federation. It is here where it is said that the reptilian invaders chose to use planet Phaeton, now planet Alphrata, as a prison planet to take there all the Lyrian people they had captured all over the galactic quadrant and from where to distribute them to their allies and their civilizations as they used the Lyrian people for slave trade and for food as meat. On planet Phaeton, the captured Lyrian people were first kept in cages where they were forced to breed. And when the babies were born, they were taken from their mothers who never saw them again. When the overlords had enough isolated young population, those captured Lyrians who remembered where they came from were slaughtered and traded or distributed as meat, with this erasing the memory of the people and their true origin with it. The young ones grew up only believing in a false narrative that explained who they were, basically telling them that they had evolved on that planet and were indigenous to it. Once the reptilians from Orion had successfully mind-controlled their new population of Lyrians, they could let them roam around the entire planet in a more or less free way, only having to obey strict rules and belong to a certain region in the planet with its city-state, which is basically a farm. Those Lyrian people were prisoners on that planet, but they were kept ignorant about the existence of anything in outer space and without knowing that there were more people like them among the stars and were also kept ignorant about who their true overlords were and what were their true intentions with them. The Lyrians there were kept in farms where their movement was restricted to only a few miles around. And if they needed to go further, they would have to ask for special permissions in the form of documents. And those who imposed those rules were no less than other Lyrians like them who were also mind-controlled and believing the same false narrative, or matrix system of beliefs. Now and then, when the reptilian overlords felt it was time, they would invent a fight, a war between one group of people and another, where they would take the people as prisoners and took them directly to their slave and meat trading network, giving the remaining population more lies and false narratives to justify why their loved ones never came back. The male population was the one most taken, as the females were mostly kept for breeding and to take care of the young. After a few hundred years of following this system, the reptilian overlords of planet Phaeton decided it was not efficient enough, as their trade networks among their races and those like them had become more demanding. So, they decided to go back to direct human farming, where the Lyrian population was kept enclosed in smaller containers called cities, from where they were not allowed to get out. From this captive population, they would take the desired people directly into farming in cages, mostly in subterranean installations where, once more, they were forced to breed, slaughtered for meat, and taken for their slave trade and all variants of these two main things. After a few decades of this, the planet and system had become almost exclusively a cage-based human farming facility of the most inhumane, cruel, and overt type, where they also slaughtered people in front of their loved ones and others to create a terror atmosphere to feed their dark astral entities and evil demons egregores, those whom the reptilians worshipped. As the reptilians became ever more and more greedy, they started to take Lyrian people from neighboring planets, such as the ones in the higher D-star cluster and the Pleiades. With this, justifying the existence of the Galactic Federation as an institution designed to counter and defend against those evil entities, mostly from Orion but not only, as by then, the Orion-based evil alliance had managed to create a large network of races and cultures that cooperated with them, which, ironically, also included many Lyrian people who were working for them willingly, perhaps, or without knowing what they were doing or whom they were working for. And the planet they abducted most people from to be taken to prison planet was planet Earth, which they also harvested for the same purposes. This horrendous dynamic continued for at least a few thousand years until the Galactic Federation grew strong enough to engage in a full-scale liberation military offensive and operation that culminated in the liberation of planet Alphrata, 
officially between the years 1560 and 1570. And of which there is a famous painting of an event, or fight, over Nuremberg, Germany, in the year 1561, and which is supposed to be a battle that had a lot to do with the liberation of the Alfreton people. After a bloody but successful military operation, Planet Phaeton was liberated from its reptilian oppressors, and the people could return to inhabit the planet in a free manner while being heavily mentored and guided by the Galactic Federation itself, who taught them how to adopt the Step Council holistic political system much used in the Federation itself and, although with its own variant, the Alfreton people still use to this day. The main variant of the holistic political system, which is worth mentioning, is some kind of a hybrid between the full holistic society as seen in most of the civilizations in the Pleiades star cluster and a democratic voting system as seen on Earth, where, in Alfrata, the council members are mostly voted into office, with this defeating the very essence of a holistic society, according to the opinions of many, including myself. The physical appearance of the average Alfreton is very Latin American, but this is for a very logical reason, as it is the result of mixing and combining all other human races, as that is exactly what happened in Planet Phaeton, now Alfrata, at least since the official year of liberation of 1561 to the present day. There are many Alfretans who look like any other race as found on Earth and others as not found on Earth as well, so the Latin American look is not exclusive, but it is quite prevalent among them. End of the official story. As I said at the start of this video, I think I'm turning into a full-blown space conspiracy theorist because I see too many things in this official story that simply don't add up. To start with, the dates simply don't add up, and the excuse of timing being very difficult to calculate in space seems not to be enough in this case. To start with, there are contradictions to when all this occurred. As I said above, some sources say this was 2 million years ago, and others only 200,000 years ago. The only big fight other races recorded in their history that went on in this stellar vicinity, which includes Earth and the Triple Centauri star system, were the Tiamat Wars calculated to have happened only 12,500 years ago. Then, the official narrative states that the Lyrians were all concentrated in planet Lyra when other sources clearly indicate that humans or such inhabited this galaxy on countless planets well before Lyra was invaded. Those other alternative sources of information that heavily contradict the Federation's official narrative come from the Ermacats, who are close allies of the Tejetan people. The Ermacats state that there couldn't have been an invasion to planet Lyra because they live on the next planet orbiting the same star, Avian, and they would have recorded all those events in their history. As the Ermacats state, they would know because they are a very dominant, strong, and aggressive military-based civilization who would never run from a nice fight using their words. And no one messes with 300 kg cats in armor and with plasma weapons. Furthermore, the entire story sounds not only like Star Wars, which in any case is just the humanized public version of the Orion Wars, but it also stinks like pro-Federation propaganda. Also, according to the Ermacats, Planet Phaeton has been well inside Federation-controlled space for like thousands of years, as is the case for Earth as well. And they state that there were no reptilian or any Orion strongholds in the galactic quadrant back then, nor any time close to when those events are said to have taken place. And the cats say they would know, as they historically are in no good terms with Orion in general and with the groups of civilizations from there. And this area in space is close to their main star Vega, making this area in space one of the most heavily armor-patrolled places in this galactic quadrant. The Galactic Federation would have known all that was happening on planet Phaeton and would have had to be acting permissively there as well as it does today with Earth and its problems. The whole story looks like a rip-off of what is happening on Earth, as you surely have noticed, only adapted to planet Phaeton. All that story fits perfectly with the narrative being pushed nowadays in many government-controlled New Age communities, the one of a benevolent Galactic Federation of love and light that is about to liberate Earth anytime now, as they say although that time never arrives. All this forces the people of Earth into believing that they will be liberated from an oppressing force, and they don't need to do anything on their own because it will be all taken care of, much like what went on with the so-called Patriot Movement some years ago, which also pushed the narrative of watching back and doing nothing while you enjoy the show. 
All this is making me see ever more clearly that the Galactic Federation is indeed controlling all the events on Earth, and I'm also seeing that they are using the same tactics they used with the Alfreton people who today absolutely love the Federation and obey all their rules, as they strongly feel that they owe their freedom and allegiance to them exactly as the people of Earth would react after a liberation, which would come after a false alien invasion like the one they are planning. All I see is that the truth is hidden under several hundreds of layers of lies both on Earth and in space. And the Ermacats, who incidentally have never obeyed the Federation's rules, or only when they want to, as no one can order a cat what to do, have become quite a nuisance for the Federation for many reasons, including that they are now sharing with me and my group their point of view about historic events in space and on Earth, and which do not match the official narratives. I thank my furball Ermacat friends for sharing with me their views about the history of the Alfreton people, especially Arishar from Irma Communications of Starship Avian One who talked to me over remote presence to share his perspective on this subject with his deep and calm feline voice, which sounds like thunder with a purr, and who corroborated much of what I already suspected on my own. He knows I will be sharing his point of view with you all and sends a big hug your way. And a lot more can be said, and I will be sharing it with you as we move along. I must say that what the Tejetan Archive states is the same information the Galactic Federation is pushing as the truth. But this is the first time we are getting clear information that conflicts with both the official Federation narrative and the Tejetan accepted information about the history of the Alfreton people, and I will be researching this more. It looks like many more things will come to the surface soon. Thank you for watching my video and for liking and subscribing for more if you see this content as valuable. And I hope to see you here next time. Take care and be very well. With much love. Your friend. Marie Soiru.